Investigators of the mystery behind the quadruple homicide inside this Washington, D.C. mansion believe money was a motive, a law enforcement source tells CNN. A separate source with knowledge of the investigation says Amy and Sava Savopoulos, their 10-year-old son Philip, and their housekeeper were bound and held captive inside the home. Terrible story. Investigators say DNA on pizza crusts could be the key to finding the person who killed four people in Washington, D.C. Police are looking for 34-year-old Darren Dillon Wint, a suspect in the four murders. Let's get to work with our panel. She's a political commentator and the author of Hand to Mouth, living in Bootstrap America, Linda Torado, and he is the host of the Todd Schoenberger Show. Pleasure to welcome both of you to Midpoint. Thanks so much for joining us. This is such a, again, just a horrific story. The 10-year-old killed and burned. We think a Domino's pizza could be the break in the case. And, and Linda, we just also learned that the suspect may be in New York. That is uh, not terribly shocking given where the crime committed. More importantly, what does Domino's Pizza think about this PR at this point? I mean, the crime obviously is horrific, um, but the idea that DNA on a pizza crust is going to be the key to solving a murder, um, I don't think you could write that for a TV drama. Well, do you think, Todd, at this particular time, can we trust the evidence and all signs point again to this uh, person, 34-year-old Darren Dillon Wint? That's right. And the suspect also has a, uh, what I understand, is quite a lengthy rap sheet. He is from, Bro or the girlfriend that he has is in Brooklyn, and therefore he's been spotted in Brooklyn. Some friends are also in the area. So I know New York City police are busy looking for him. The girlfriend was actually taken into the precinct for questioning, and she, she, she actually said that the suspect is on his way back to D.C. to turn himself in. But the, the police are actually thinking it's a, a diversion. So, yeah, it's an awful story, and hopefully they'll catch him soon. Yeah, his uh, face plastered all across America, and hopefully that will be enough That's to right. capture this 34-year-old Darren Dillon Wint. Uh, we want to move on. Uh, work continues to clean up an oil spill in California. We're also hearing the company that operates the pipeline. Plains All-American had 175 safety and maintenance violations the last nine years. Linda... What are your thoughts about, again, another oil spill, and it just looks like the cleanup's going to take months? I mean, we see this in just about every major industry. We saw it with Massey Energy and the coal mines that, that killed all of those miners. We saw it with BP. We know that when these things happen, it's because we're not taking care of basic safety, basic maintenance. And it's just, at this point, more profitable to take the risk than it is to actually you know, keep up on all of those things. So the question is, what are we going to do to stop this from happening again? Todd, do we need to reassess the use of uh, oil drilling off the coast? Or do you think this is just a bad company that, again, has had 175 violations? Well, this is the actually it's probably the sign of things to come because and I, I don't think this is obviously a, a one off situation. I mean, you could go back nine years to the BP uh, issue in Alaska. And then obviously with the Gulf oil spill and Exxon, Exxon Valdez, you know, obviously uh, that that disaster it took place but linda is right though when you start looking at the risk that's there when you just look at the checks and balances that the companies internally have to use to look at these pipes and yet you still have these cracks you have these issues that take place these oil spills this is only the, the company looks at this and says okay i'll pay the fine but the dollars themselves are much more lucrative for the oil companies. So when you start talking about offshore drilling, you start talking about using some other uh, alternative fuels. Realistically, though, all these oil companies are making so much cash right now. It doesn't matter what the fine is going to be in a case like this. They'll be, uh, the, and this is probably the sign of things to come for the next few years. Yeah, I don't know what the solution is, but we see that scene all. It's all too familiar. Workers on the coastline and birds drenched in tar. Uh, the work continues right now off That's the coast right. of California. Wall Street Journal op-ed calls Asians the new Jews of Harvard admissions. Here's the backstory. Allegations that Harvard works to limit the number of Asian students. There is a civil rights complaint filed against Harvard. Linda, are whites, African Americans, and Hispanics given preferential treatment over Asian Americans? You know, it's not even that. What we're seeing is that they have pretty much exactly the same racial makeup in every incoming class going back for years now. So it's not even a question of, of preferential over one race over the other. It's a question of quotas that they're sticking to very, very closely. And Harvard's saying that they're not doing that. But when you look at the evidence, it's really hard to, to back that up. And Todd, this again goes back to when they try to limit the amount of Jewish students at Harvard. 
What do you think what Linda just mentioned there? It just seems like, again, there's almost a formula as far as the freshman class at Harvard. Good thing or bad thing? I disagree completely with that statement. I mean, Harvard actually accepts 6% of their applicants. So you have to look at every piece of the puzzle here. The actual complaint is talking about SAT scores. We're not looking at extracurricular activities. We're not looking at all the other community service outreach programs that high school students need to do to, to get into a bulge bracket Ivy. And, and I think this is actually unfounded. It's a meritless case because if you look even across the board for even uh, state schools, but even community colleges, Community colleges, 50% of the population is, are Asian students. So what's that say to you? It has nothing to do with the demographics of it. But you know what? Harvey Todd can, Taylor, can hold it right there. whomever they want. Appreciate those comments as always. We're going to join our panel coming up right after this break. Welcome back to Midpoint. I'm Rick Blackwell in for Ed Berliner, Linda Torado, and Steve Schoenberger. Kind enough to stick with us another day. Another health insurance company hacked. Care First, the latest to see a data breach. We've reported on Anthem, 80 million records compromised. Blue Crossing, 11 million customer records stolen. Uh, Nick Tate from Newsmax TV has done some wonderful reporting on this. It just seems like we're just seeing way too much of this. And Todd, what can we do as health consumers out there? Is there anything we can do to prevent this from happening? Unfortunately, there isn't. I mean, think about the information that the hackers are actually obtaining. I mean, this is the, the golden goose of, of hacking because it has everything that you need. You have medical records, social security numbers, addresses. This is a lot more detailed than, say, the Target or Home Depot hacks because that's where you're looking at credit cards, and credit cards actually have a short shelf life because you can simply cancel them and, or have something else reissued. But when you start looking at the healthcare companies, this is a monster problem. The Department of Health and Human and services says back to going back to 2009 there have been over a thousand of these cases maybe smaller ones but obviously you're looking at a quite a wide range of the population so our eyes have to be open for this well Linda the investigation continues and right now all eyes pointing to China what are you hearing about maybe who's at fault for this I mean, the first place we always point is China, and about half of the time we never hear back again. But it goes, I think, back into another story like the oil spill, and again, like Massey, where you've got these companies that simply aren't putting the resources into protecting the public when they're getting this information or doing their business. So it's really a question of corporate priorities at this point. I do not believe that they can't put up better firewalls than that. You know, we're doing we're such a concerted effort out there to turn all this paper in the health industry and make it electronic. And again, we continue to see these data breaches. I'm sure we're going to see more in the months to come, unfortunately. Let's turn to Hollywood. Maggie Gyllenhaal at 37 said she was told she was too old for a role to play opposite a 55-year-old <laughs> man. I want to ask you, uh, Linda, are, are we getting to the point where when George Clooney peers on camera for the first time and we see this younger person, is it his wife? Is it his daughter? Or at some point, do you think we're just over exaggerating this whole thing? And then maybe the script is pointing out that this older guy's got a younger wife. I mean, I think it's a Hollywood tradition that, that women by the time they're in their mid-30s are pretty done. But it's a broader cultural trend, too. I mean, I'm 32 years old, and I could show you emails upon emails of people telling me I'm way too old to be in public. Um, so, you know, as far as it goes, I think that it's a problem that we do have to deal with. Um, but I also think I see signs of hope. You know, you're seeing plenty of women in their 30s, their 40s, even up into their 50s now starting to take leading roles. And I think that that's a hopeful sign. Was it somebody is questioning you be out in public at 32? Did I did I catch that right? Oh yeah. Oh, oh dude, oh, I goodness. should see my. <laughs> we got to find that person, put them on TV, put them in the hot seat. Todd, what are your <laughs> thoughts about yeah. Hollywood? I mean, it should be a reflection of society, but isn't this going a little bit too far? Well, perhaps, but keep in mind, though, this is, a, this is one movie, one producer. The producer has an eye and a vision for what the movie is going to be. So maybe Maggie just was not the right character for this role. However, I think Linda brings up a good point. I mean, the segue into other leading roles later in life for females, and you see this over and over again. I mean, even in the upcoming James Bond film, the leading lady's 50 years old. I, so that's, that's Daniel Craig is 47. So there is something to be said about, um, about the, I guess, when old when older actresses once they reach a certain age. But I wouldn't look too far into this. It's just one movie, well, one role, one producer. We can move on. You know, we seem like I mean, we're talking about this a lot, Linda, with Stacey Dash on Fox talking about, you know, actresses only making 75 cents to the dollar of their male counterparts in Hollywood. What, put a 
kind of cap this for us? I mean, look, we know that this is an actual trend going back as far as Hollywood's existed because Hollywood is a fantasy land in which every 60-year-old man can land himself a 27-year-old love interest. <laughs> and, and, you know, two, you're pointing at Monica Bellucci. Monica Bellucci is, is uh, not precisely every 50-year-old woman. I think everybody can agree to that. So, you know, look, gender issues are going to be gender issues. Hollywood does portray a broader kind of fantasy society. I think it's a little, the better question is, what kind of fantasy do we really want to portray? And the last question, Wi-Fi making a woman sick, or at least she claims. You know, I, I got to ask you, Todd. Are these cell phones and Wi-Fi kind of the cigarettes of our generation? We may think or we may not think that they're dangerous and hazardous to our health. And ultimately, in 20 or 30 years, we're going to find that they were extremely dangerous. Come on, Rick. This is just a crutch for the lazy right now. <laughs> we're going to have people calling, calling out sick um, so they wouldn't have to show up to work because there's so much Wi-Fi that's going <laughs> on. It's ridiculous to think that Wi-Fi rays or whatever are going to actually going to make you ill. And you know what? I mean, realistically, I mean, we have been dealing with what Wi-Fi and Internet and wireless for how long now? It's been going on for years. And now all of a sudden this is turning into an epidemic for people forget about it. If people want to complain, they're going to complain. All right. And we covered a lot of bases today. Todd Schoenberger, we really appreciate your comments. Linda Torada, always great to see you. And again, don't call in sick tomorrow and complain case of the Wi-Fi. It's not going to work, especially with Todd. <laughs> Thanks so much to you guys again. Fabulous conversation. And you're watching Midpoint here on Newsmax TV. When we come back, we're going to take a look at Red Nose Day. Have you heard about this? Pretty compelling story. I'm Rick Blackwell, in for Ed Berliner.